San Monan Dumelang Abshen. Good day to everyone who's watching this video. Welcome to the Door of 21st birthday celebration. My name is Shannon, the lead teacher of Dorfop Play and Learn Center. I'll be your host today alongside my CEO, Mr. Richard Allen. Mr. Richard, welcome. Thank you, Shannon. It's good to be here. And can I just say that you look absolutely beautiful today. Thank you. It's a special occasion. Pleasure. And we need to take just a minute to talk about this cake that we have here. And uh, what would a birthday celebration be without a cake, of course? And I need to brag a little bit because it is my wife that actually made this cake. My lovely wife, Cherie. So she did a wonderful job. And uh, we are going to get to enjoy this cake. Unfortunately, our audience isn't. So I'm sorry that those who are watching won't get to eat this cake with us but we'll have to just eat it on their behalf. Yes. I am really excited with what we have to share in our video and uh, you're going to have to make sure that you watch right until the end because we have a special something for you. Oh, now you're getting me excited. So Richard, can you please tell us what this video is all about? Sure. So we had planned this whole big gala dinner event where we were going to be at this very fancy uh, venue. It was going to be a big deal. But then COVID-19 came along and obviously that stopped everything. So we were trying to figure out how can we still celebrate what God has done in all these years. That's where we came up with the idea of this video. And so we really want to just give our Heavenly Father all the glory for the many lives that He has saved and that He has impacted in these 21 years. In the Bible, it is recorded uh, Jesus saying that not even a sparrow can fall to the ground without our Heavenly Father knowing about it. And Jesus talking to His disciples tells them, do not be afraid. If that's how much God sees and cares for a bird, how much more does he love and care for each one of us? And so this was a key verse for Door of Hope when we started. And with this, we know that God loves and he cares for each one of these babies that are being abandoned. And he wants them to be saved and looked after. Absolutely. God uses people as his hands and feet. And for the past 21 years, God has used a lot of people to accomplish what has been done. So we also want to say thank you to all our staff and all the supporters of Dove Hope. To start us off our first segment, we now go to an interview with Pastor Cheryl Allen, the founder of Dove Hope. Hi, Pastor Cheryl, and welcome. Thank you very much. Wow. 21 years since you founded the Door of Hope Children's Mission. How does it make you feel to think that we are celebrating 21 years of saving abandoned babies? I feel very grateful um, thinking back how God has provided for us so faithfully over 21 years. That's wonderful. I've been working at the mission for just over a year now and um, some of the, the baby stories have made quite an impact on me um, just in this year. And I can already relate to some of the aunties who say how they never forget the babies. When you think back to those early years, are there babies whose stories have stayed with you that you still remember to this day? Yes, there's so many that uh, I recall, um, but I'll mention just two to you. So the one um, was that I was called one day to and actually it turned out to be an abortion clinic in a bad part of town to go and fetch a baby and when I got there um, they gave me the baby but it seemed there was something wrong with him and they said no he's just a grunter which I'd never heard of anyway so um, I quickly took him and got into my car which was the safest place uh, there was a lot of danger around at that time and as I unwrapped him to look at him he was actually ice cold and dying um, and so I immediately stuffed him down the front of my clothes onto my chest, naked, to give him my warmth, and raced through to the hospital, parked my car in a bad place, rushed inside, grabbed the doctor, 
who didn't want to come with me, but I refused to let him go unless he helped me. And the baby survived and went up to a lovely, lovely family. The other story I remember, we were very busy at church one Wednesday and people were coming and going. Um, and just after lunch, I looked up and there was a young lady standing with a bundle in her arms at the door. Um, and so I went to her and I said, oh, hi, you're from the clinic. And she said, no, she didn't actually answer. And I realized what was happening. So I uh, just quickly took her to my office. There was a lot of reporters around asking questions and they would have loved to have taken photos of her, but I wanted to keep her anonymity. And so I took her to my office and we talked and um, she gave me the baby. Um, and she was a student and what had happened was she'd had the baby alone in a flat that day and had waited in the park waiting for all the people to leave, but they never did. And she had the courage to actually come and bring me the baby, despite all the people there. Um, and so she was a student and wasn't able to care for her baby. And those stories never leave you, hey? So Pastor Cheryl, just the idea of the baby box, which was um, original to the Door of Hope and originally known as the hole in the wall, this was your God-inspired idea. And this idea has become a worldwide solution to prevent unsafe abandonment from America to Asia to Europe. I mean, I know you don't even, you don't think on these things, but baby boxes are the reason children are safe because of an idea that you follow through on, that God inspired you with. But when you were just 14 years old, you surrendered your life to God in a very moving moment alone with the Lord at a Youth for Christ camp. And I think few people know about that moment in your life. You committed to him to serve him and you gave up your will to his at just 14. What would you say to that 14 year old girl today, knowing how much significance that moment had? It was the hardest decision to make um, because I wanted to control my own life. And I wanted God on my terms. Um, and so my struggle was to actually surrender my will to his will. I confessed my sins and did everything else, but, but the surrendering of my will was the hardest. But it was also the, the best decision I've ever made to follow the Lord Jesus with all my heart and with all my soul and with all my mind and my will. And he has led me in amazing and wonderful and very difficult ways that I would never have traveled in without him. And, and I have struggled, I must say, it, it hasn't been easy. We always talk about the good side, and even with the babies, there were terrible situations with the babies. But I have struggled with extreme stress, overwork, exhaustion, great danger, tremendous difficulties. And that I'm still here, actually, and alive, I attribute to God's protection, His provision, His love and care, and His sustaining power. Uh, God has given me a meaningful life, and really fulfilled, I believe I am fulfilling the purpose for which I was born. Um, I, I believe if it wasn't for him, I certainly wouldn't be here. And uh, he has got me into it, but he also got me through it. That's amazing. And I think it's a good thing that he didn't show your 14 year old self everything he was going to have you accomplish. It might have been a little <laughs> scary to a 14 year old, but also what an amazing testimony that you say he never left you and he got you through everything. Um, just thank you for sharing that. I know it was a very personal moment and I appreciate that. When you speak and you speak of what God has gotten you through, I'm reminded of the step that you took in buying the baby home in Glen Vista, the first baby home at 15 Barbara Road. The value of that property was 400,000 at that time. And when you signed the offer to purchase, you, had, you didn't have the money. But a few weeks um, or a few days, I think it was even before the transfer went through, you were able to pay for that property in full. That's quite an amazing story. And when I think about where we are now, I fast forward to 1,716 babies, three baby homes and a village. It's amazing to think what God has done for the Door of Hope. How would you encourage the current leadership and the staff as we face challenges and struggles, much of what you've mentioned, um, but also moved to do God's will? Um, I think we must never be presumptuous. I wasn't presumptuous in doing that, but 
I prayed my knees through and really felt God led me to, to make those decisions. Um, so to encourage the people now is to keep putting God first in everything. I can only say that, that we, we must put God first in everything. Don't let your focus slip to trusting in yourself and what you can do and your abilities and your attempts. God will lead you one step at a time, one problem at a time, and give you the ability and the wisdom to handle it. Amen. And thank you for sharing that. You made an impact in orphan care within Christian circles, and you understand the compassion, you understand the demands of compassion ministry, which you've just referred to just now. Bearing Galatians 6 verse 9 in mind, and let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. What pearls of wisdom can you offer to believers around the world who have come after you and are moved by compassion for others? Um, I've tried to live a simple life, and the basic thing is to obey God um, in everything that I do and try and obey Him and seek His, His will. So the first thing I would say is to obey Jesus and serve where He places you. Many people try and serve where they want to go. And I think it's vital and very important that you make sure as far as you can, because God guides us and we only look back oftentimes and see that, but to obey Jesus and serve where He places you faithfully. The second thing is to trust Him to supply what you need, whether it's a lot or a little, in His time. And I always taught my guys to let's serve God and do what he asks us whether you've got the money or not with whatever he's given you you serve him with what he supplies and the third thing is is to expect hardships don't be taken by surprise by them it's part of the deal um, and so to persevere faithfully through them because you're only called an overcomer if you've overcome stuff amen I like that. You're only called an overcomer if you've overcome stuff. So your sons, David and Richard, currently serve as the CFO and the CEO at the Door of Hope. Your daughter, Carmen, served as the marketing manager. Your daughter-in-law, Kate, was a director with us. And then many of the staff from the early years, Auntie Margaret, still with us. Nadine, who started a decade later, is still with us now at 21 years as the operations director. The first door of her baby, Georgina, even returned as a volunteer in 2016. Some supporters who started with you in your time still are with us as partners and supporters now, 21 years later. In the face of all the challenges that South Africa faced in these 21 years, when other nonprofits had to close their doors, what do you attribute Door of Hope's success story to? Trusting in God alone, that's it. Trusting in God. And then the amazing, dedicated people that God... And we thank God for that. Yeah, the, the amazing, dedicated people that God brought to Door of Hope to come alongside us, to help us, to give and to serve. Um, God brought people that had the skills and talents that were willing to not work for the money because there wasn't any in the beginning and there hasn't been a lot since <laughs> as far as that's concerned, but people that were willing that had hearts for God. And so I've been privileged to work with amazing, wonderful people. Pastor Cheryl, I see your emotion and your life has been a life of passion and fire for Christ. I believe the best description for you is a woman of courage and of faith. I think many people who have been inspired by your story would want me to ask this question because I know they've asked it of me. What has God got you busy with now? At the moment, I'm mentoring certain people and I am still caring for the poor and those in need, especially in our COVID days. And I pray. I pray a lot for the people and the staff, etc., and the babies, of course. And then God's given me time for myself. So I read a lot and, um, and I've been able to enjoy all the, the uh, nature here, which is wonderful. And I'm doing some crafts and working with my daughter on some stuff. <laughs> 
So, so it's been amazing just to have some time to do some stuff that I never had time for in the past when I worked so hard. Wow. Pastor Cheryl, as you, um, as we, we round up our, our interview, what words of wisdom would you like to leave us with? The Door of Hope, the babies who have come from Door of Hope that one day might watch this, um, people who have been interested in our ministry, what would you say to them at this time? I would say that God uses the most unlikely people, and me for one. And so I'd say from a poor refugee church with no money, no resources, in a crime-ridden and one of the most dangerous areas in 1999, from a few babies sleeping in plastic bars on tabletops in a room in a rundown building. It must be obvious to everyone that it could only have been God that built Door of Hope to where it is and what it is today. Sorry, I'm getting a bit emotional when I hear you. Um, Pastor Cheryl, it's been an honor and a privilege to have this conversation with you. And as I say goodbye, I pray for you. May his face shine upon you always. And thank you for starting something that all of us get the privilege to be part of. God bless you and keep you. Thank you. Wow, some really profound thought there by Pastor Cheryl. And for those who don't know, Pastor Cheryl is actually Richard's mother. Richard, you must have had an interesting upbringing with a mother like Pastor Cheryl. I definitely feel tremendously blessed to have a mom as well as my dad who follow Jesus as they do. Mm -hmm. And I'm grateful to God for how he has used my mom with the door of hope. It is wonderful to be a part of a legacy like this. Mm -hmm. Shannon, I have a question for you. You obviously spend a lot of time as the lead teacher uh, with the children, caring for them, teaching them at the Play and Learn Center. So Shannon, tell me what has been your experience of children getting adopted into their forever families? Well, we get very excited to see these children go to their mommies and daddies because family is important. We get sad, of course, because we are now used to them when they're living. And it's also sad for the ones that are still waiting to get their forever families. But it's an exciting time to see family come together. And I can think of nothing better than a loving family coming to fetch their child from Door of Hope. And we have had the privilege of seeing over 700 adoptions to date. So we are going to now share a special adoption story as we celebrate God bringing many families together. What made us to adopt, it was a difficult decision. I couldn't uh, get babies naturally by myself and we tried everything. There came the door of hope that gave hope to me. Yes, the process took us one and a half years to give us the child to work. on the 21 February. The first. One February. We had to buy the car seats for them. That was the first thing that we had to buy the car seats. Then we, we were given at least a profile of the kids to know how they weigh and uh, the size of the clothing they could wear and their age. Then we went to buy the clothes for them. I couldn't wait to get into, into the baby shops and buy such stuff with other women to say, oh, how old is your child? Mine is one year. <laughs> it was a nice experience. They left them with us so that we can at least bond with them and gave us purity to feed them. They were so sweet and so nicely dressed. 
So we thought if we go and celebrate their birthday at the home, which will not be only for last year, but though we cannot do it every year, but now and then we will. So that when they are ready to be told, we can tell that they where we were celebrating your birthdays, these are your photos, it's where we took you from, it's your first home. I want them to love that home. And even if they grow up, they must also do something back to the home. So because that's where our treasures came from and that's where their life started. There are children out there that are waiting for families. And if you feel you cannot keep your child, give away the child for adopt. There are parents out there that are waiting to adopt your child and be parents and give the child the future that she or he might need. What a fantastic story. And we want to say thank you to the family for sharing your lives with us. It is amazing to think of the potential that God has placed in each child and what God can do in their lives. That is the wonderful thing about my next guest. She is the first child to come to Dovob way back in 1999. Of course, I'm talking about Georgina. She has prepared a special message for Dorfoop. Let's have a look. Georgina was the first baby to arrive at the Door of Hope Children's Mission. She was 14 months old. Her biological mother made the decision to give her up so that Georgina could have a better life. In those first days, we were very concerned about her. This little girl had an unusual protruding forehead and was not speaking. So we at first thought she might have brain damage. We cared for her and loved her and prayed for her. Soon enough, Georgina became an active, engaging child. Within a year, she was adopted by an American couple who were champions of the work that Door of Hope was doing in the inner city of Johannesburg. Roy and Shirley Smith returned to the United States with their little girl. Very shortly, they learned that she was indeed special. In Georgina's first year at school, she was identified as academically gifted and placed in the class with gifted learners. Throughout her academic career, Georgina excelled and graduated high school in 2016. In her young life, Georgina has also hit a few musical high notes. She is a passionate musician and received violin and piano lessons. Georgina also taught herself to play the guitar her greatest gift is that she is a wonderful singer. She captivated small and large audiences while learning and honing her skills with the world-renowned Virginia Children's Chorus, even performing a solo with the London Symphony Orchestra at the Royal Albert Hall at the age of 14 when the choir toured there. Georgina gives the term giving back a whole new meaning. In 2016, she returned to the Door of Hope as a volunteer. This felt like a full circle moment for us. It was a highlight for the aunties who remembered the little baby they cared about so much. And in turn, Georgina was an inspiration to everyone who met her. Some years back, Georgina's father, Roy, sent us this message. The most precious memory we have is the day I had the privilege of baptizing Georgina. We are indeed proud parents watching our little girl grow up to love and serve the Lord Jesus Christ. The children in the Door of Hope are being given love, but they are also being given hope. First of all, they receive the hope of eternal life in Jesus Christ. Through this love from the staff and volunteers in the baby house, and then with their forever families, they are given a place of privilege, and an opportunity to grow to their full God-given potential. Only God knows what type of leaders are being prepared as life paths are changed by the touch of the Door of Hope Children's Mission. This year, Georgina is graduating from East Carolina University with a major in African American Studies and a minor in Jazz Vocal Performance Studies. This young leader took some time out of her busy schedule to share a sweet message with us 
and to honour Jesus with her gift of singing. Hey everyone! I hope everyone is doing well and staying safe during these trying times that we're experiencing. In different circumstances, I would give anything to be there celebrating with the whole Door of Hope team and to hug those babies extra tight, but it's always good to know that they're still getting many cuddles and kisses from all the aunties at each baby house. Door of Hope will always hold a special place in my heart. In a way, I feel like we have a special bond, seeing that I'm only 22, so I'm fondly remembering the many celebrations surrounding my own 21st birthday. I think back to stories my parents love to tell me about the first few years of my life as a little food-deprived girl who just needed some love and attention. My dad tells me that whenever they would visit, I would latch onto his leg because I didn't want him to leave me, and then one day, he didn't and they haven't left my side ever since. What's crazy is that I don't really remember the hard stuff. I only remember the love and the prayers that I receive from every single person that I meet. Now I'm 22 years old, graduating from East Carolina University in the fall with a major in African American Studies and a minor in Jazz Vocal Performance. I've had the chance to travel to many different countries and all across the U.S. and I'm enjoying the process of figuring life out. I'm excited, nervous, and everything in between for this next phase in my life transitioning into adulthood because that's what entering your 20s means, which is why this is such an exciting milestone for the Door of Hope. I'm so excited to see how God is going to lead the Door of Hope into its adult years. I know that the next 21 years will see success of the village and more adoptions than ever before. I thank y'all so much for your prayers and your continued support, and I want to wish Door of Hope the happiest of birthdays. When peace like a river attendeth my way when so Thank you so much, Georgina, for sharing your kind and heartfelt message with us. Uh, it is such a joy to see you grow up to become the radiant, talented young woman that you are. And we wish you God's richest blessing for your future. And Richard, it is quite something to think that Margaret was there when Georgina first came to Dorfu. And she is still here working as a care worker. Yeah, a shout out to Margaret. Wow, 21 years that she's been with us. She has seen a lot of babies. We also want to give a shout out to all the staff and the volunteers who have worked so hard over these 21 years. Uh, and just to all the devoted people that have done such a marvelous job in looking after the babies. Yes, and our amazing care workers have been preparing a special item for us. We hope you enjoy it. Tu, tu, 
la mtwana tula sana tula mauzo kuya ekuseni tula tu tula mtwana tula sana tula mauzo kuya ekuseni tula tu tula mtwana tula sana tula mauzo kuya ekuseni in the desert, you swim in the wasteland. In the living water, a man's weapon. Wow, Shannon, the care workers really did a great job with that. Well done to the team. And yes, what would a birthday be without getting a special phone call or a message from family and friends? Dorfop is privileged to have many kind-hearted partners and supporters. Here are a few messages from some of them. To the past and present family of Dorf Hope, I want to say happy 21st birthday. I remember the challenge when the first baby arrived, then the second one, and now 21 years later the Door of Hope has made a difference to 1,700 children and still counting. There is a song which says, May those who come behind us find us faithful. May all those who minister at the Door of Hope continue to leave a legacy as the founders did in being faithful to Jesus who brought this ministry into existence. May the Lord continue to bless the work of the Door of Hope in the years ahead. Thank you and God bless. Hi there. My walk with Door of Hope can only be described as a wonderful journey as we celebrate together the goodness and the grace of our Lord and Saviour Jesus Christ as he has done great and marvelous things for us all and we are grateful to all the faithful and dedicated staff and volunteers and supporters that we have had over the years for, for, for their faithfulness, for their dedication and we are really grateful to be able to celebrate these 21 years. It's been a wonderful journey and we do pray that God will continue to use us and that his name will be glorified. 
Happy birthday, Dorf Ho. I am so proud of you all, and I just want to say we're so thankful for you taking care of those babies, and we continue to pray for you each day. So, greetings in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and do, uh, I join Shirley in thanking you for your prayers. I remember when we started the Door of Hope uh, as a part of uh, Bria Hillbrow Baptist Mission Church that Pastor Cheryl led us to pray. And it was several months every time we met that we were praying, Lord, protect the babies. And then as we needed the baby house number one, it was really through uh, prayer that God uh, gave information to Norm and Cheryl Nelson and they were able to raise funds. And then it was through prayer that uh, the exchange rate, the week that the money was changed, was just, uh, just the right amount to buy the baby house one. So thank you. God bless you. When God calls you to a ministry such as this, it can only be a blessing. Happy 21st birthday, Door of Hope. Thank you for changing so many lives, including mine. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Here's to many more years ahead. Happy birthday. So this is Emma wishing Door of Hope a happy birthday. Um, we are excited to celebrate with you 21 years of wonderful service. Uh, we've been such long-standing partners and we have such an appreciation for the great job that you guys do. We are proud and honoured to work with you for these many years. Um, I know for a fact that the one thing that join us is our united vision that all children belong in families. And we are looking forward to another 21 years of working together in a great partnership. Happy birthday um, from all of us at ABBA and all the different offices. We wish you all the best for the future and we're looking forward to work with you in the next 21 years. Cheers! Bye! I'm Paul Langston with Baptist on Mission and I am delighted and honored to work with Door of Hope as uh, we through Baptist on Mission continue to support and serve you in the years ahead. And we are so thankful to have been involved with the Door of Hope since the very beginning. And when I think about all those babies that have come through the Door of Hope. I think about the contribution, those babies that were rescued, their lives are making in our world today and the difference they're gonna make in the world in the years to come. Thank you for what you've done. Hi. Congratulations, Congratulations. from the UK. Yes, and uh, from a couple of Roynecks. Um, <laughs> but God bless you on reaching this stage of your journey and your calling is wonderful, serving these little children, these little abandoned ones. I want to say a special hello to some of the staff who may remember me there, like Auntie Francina, Auntie Adelaide, Veronica, and all the rest of you special ladies, and all the tea we shared together. May the Lord bless you all. Happy 21st birthday, Dawn of Hope. As the co-founder of the 100 ABCS Club, it's been a great pleasure collaborating with you these last 10 years. Congratulations and I wish you all the best. Thank you so much to everyone who sent through those messages. Door of Hope would not exist if God didn't move the hearts of people to be generous and to give their support, and if they didn't respond. We want all of you who support Door of Hope through your prayers, your volunteering and your giving to know that we really do appreciate your kindness and your generosity. So now enjoy our thank you messages sent to you from the bottom of our hearts. Firstly, and most of all, we would like to thank Jesus Christ for his faithful provision and tremendous blessing over these many years. Our Heavenly Father deserves all the glory for what has been accomplished at Door of Hope. But God uses people, and so there are many of you who we would like to thank. Thank you to the Department of Social Development. Bye Donkey, to ABBA Adoption Social Services for finding our children loving forever families. Thank you to our lifesavers who adopt a crib. Thank you to all our life changers who give monthly. Thank you to all our superheroes who fundraise for our children. Thank you to everyone who brings us donations. Thank you. Merci beaucoup pour les dons que vous nous avez donnés. 
Thank you to our amazing care workers. Thank you for praying for us and the children. Merci beaucoup de prendre soin de nos bébés qui sont malades. Thank you to all the staff of Door of Hope. Thank you to our wonderful volunteers. Thank you to everybody that supports our volunteers. Thank you to all the volunteer teams who have helped us build the village. Thank you to all our supporters who offer their skills. Thank you to all of you from the board of directors. De la part du bureau des directeurs, merci de votre support. Thank you for caring for abandoned children. We hope that video expressed how grateful we are to each and every supporter. And now it is time for that special item that we've all been waiting for. And I think everyone is going to love it. Enjoy! Surely your goodness and love 
You follow me all the day of my life. I will die in the house of the Lamb forever. My babies, they are so cute. And they are so clever as well. Thank you to you, Shannon, and all the caregivers who take care of and love our precious children and also teach them to become all that God has created them to be. Oh, thank you so much. They are so precious to work with. For those of you in South Africa, do yourself a favor and go and get your hands on a copy of the August issue of Joy magazine. Door of Hope has a four-page article in there where we are celebrating our 21 years. Also, please click like for this video, share it with your friends, and remember to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Well, Richard, sadly our time together has come to an end. Thank you everyone for watching. We really hope that you've enjoyed it as much as we have. From all of us at Door of Hope, be safe out there and God bless you. We love you. Banana, I'm